Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Okay, like I said, we have a bombshell that we're gonna go here with the Delilah Evans situation, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to play back like we had a conversation today, and you know, things had started to become questionable as we were having this conversation. And I got in contact with Delilah Evans' father, right? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about all this, you know, coming up. You know, we're gonna um, do what needs to be done. We're gonna we're gonna do this right here. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all know I am the one of the most fairest men in the YouTube community. We got 30 people in here. So okay, we're gonna let the people. Hey, how you guys doing? What's up, Lee Lee? What's up, Kim? What's up, Tawana C? What's up, James Hudson? What's up, Pamela Sweeney? What's up, uh, um, Gator Lady? What's up, Just Me? What's up, Carol Carper? What's up, Nate? What's up, Puss in Boots? Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me go on and start this. Um, Gina, what's up? How you doing, Gina? Let's listen to a part of this, you know, situation that we spoke earlier when I spoke with um you know some of the ladies that heard you heard your story last night on the show they felt real sorry and what was going on so you know they wanted wanted to you know help you out much as they could okay so Tell them I said thank you uh, I sure will. Now, you know, we had got thrown off. You kind of threw me off on um, one of your questions, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now, on one of the one of the questions, right, that I had asked you, you had, you had said um, he had asked you to kill her, right? When you were talking, yeah. about, when you were talking, about, your, was talking about your stepfather, did he, mm -hmm. was those voices that you were hearing or that who he, or he actually asked you to do it or wanted you to do it? He was, he was trying, um, well, I think when, um, when everything happened, when we had sex and stuff like that, he was, like, sh like, showed me how to wear, like, like, how you wear, like, thongs and bras and stuff like that, but, like, I don't, um, what's the question? Did, did he, was, was he the one? I don't know what happened here. Uh, when he told you to do it, did he tell you to do it, or that was? Yeah. Oh, he he asked you to kill your mother. He asked me to do it so we could be together. What was his What was his exact words? How did he come to you and, and say it? I was like, I was sick of her. She kept on calling the house and like, where is the Where she was trying to? She was, she just kept on calling on the phone. I was like, I'm finna. But I was like, I'm finna kill this. And he was like, okay, but how are we going to be together? And he kept asking me to be with him and marry me. And um, all this moved me to, Bro to um, Brooklyn and go to New York and live with him. But um, I heard that he was he said he was going to set his houses and for us to be together because he wanted somebody younger like my age. Okay. Now, did he ever tell you that he loved you better than he, more than he loved your mother? Let me ask you this one more question. Let me ask you this question about the two because I didn't get a chance to ask you this one. Did he ever tell you in any way that you look better than your mother and you was better than your mother? Or God damn it. Quit calling my phone. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I got motherfuckers calling my phone. Shouldn't be I'm people calling my phone, they shouldn't be calling. Go ahead, here we go. Let me get this back up. You know, some of the ladies that heard your heard okay, your story we're last we're night we're on the show, they felt real sorry and what was going on. So you know, is that you were hearing or that who he or he actually asked you to do it or wanted you to do it? Did he was 
was he the one that told you to do it? Did he tell you to do it, or that was? Yes. Oh, he he asked you to kill your mother. He asked me to do it so we could be together. What was his What was his exact words? How did he come to you and, and say it? I was like, I was sick of her. She kept on calling the house and like, where's the line? Where she was trying to, she was, she kept on calling. From here comes like, the like, customer. But I was like, I'm finna kill this. Oh, and he was like, okay, but how are we gonna be together? And he kept asking me to be with him and marry me. And um, all this moved me to Bro to um Brooklyn and go to New York and live with him. But um, I heard that he was he said he was gonna set his houses and for us to be together because he wanted somebody younger like my age. Okay. Now, did he ever tell you that he loved you better than he more than he loved your mother? Um, we would like we would go to like motels and have sex, and he would like like why she keep calling? But I think. When he started messing around with me, he forgot about my mom and just wanted to be with me and have a baby with me. And I said, I'm not going to do that. Now, now let, let me ask you this one more question. Let me ask you this question about it, too, because I didn't get a chance to ask you this one. Did he ever tell you in any way that you look better than your mother and you was better than your mother or better than your mother? Did he yeah. Ever? Yeah. He did. He tried to have sex with me when he, my mama was sleeping in her apartment building. And I was on a, um, I was on a, um, rocking chair and then he, then my auntie was like what's going on what's that sound out here he said are you going to, are you molesting her and my my, my auntie masako she she knew something was going on and that's probably why the um cps lady wanted to fight her the cps lady wanted to fight your auntie or your mother my auntie because she didn't want to stick up for me and say that i was raped by my stepdad she well. said she didn't want to, my mom to know oh, okay she didn't want your mother to know she wasn't going to tell so, like, what was the words he used to say to you far as, you know, comparing you to your mother? What would he used to say? He said, I'm looking for a woman. I can have my kids and a person that I can marry him and be with him and go to New York and live a life, a new life. But I was like, I can't leave my mom here because she don't, he trying to take the baby. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, hold on. Sorry about that. So he was saying, now, he said what now? He wanted to be with me. He wanted to get my social security and my um my birth certificate so that he can say that he's my, um, what do you call that stuff? Um, guardian? He was getting a guardian, yes. Okay. Uh, now, let me ask you this, like, so, like, when did you realize that you loved him and started having feelings for him? When did you realize that? When I was, I still think he has feelings for my mama, but I don't really know because he hasn't talked to, he came up to the county, but he, I didn't really say much about my mama. So, um, at this point, he just really wants to be with me. But I'm in prison, so that holds him back. And that's why he drink. He's an alcoholic. Right. Like, he, I would drink Hennessy. You have one minute <laughs> remaining. Right. When was the last time that you had contact with him? You have 60 seconds remaining. When, when was the last time you, you know, had contact with him? At the county. At about 2000. I got here in 2018. Right. So 2017. Wait a minute, if the, just hang up a call back. I'm going to put some minutes on the phone, okay? Okay. All right. That's part one of the conversation here. Let's, let's get part two up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let, okay, let me ask you, th let me ask you this question, okay? Mm -hmm. The resentment that came towards your mother mm -hmm. that, that that resentment did he build that resentment up by what he was doing and trying to turn you against your mother or that built up yeah. okay um go into details on how did he do it how did he um you know put this resentment towards mama how he resented my mama no how he made you resent your mother how did he put that in you It was, 
because I was young and he was taking advantage of me. And I didn't know that he didn't like me like that, but he was falling in love with me and I was falling in love with him. But I never, I knew my mom wouldn't approve, so I just cried to her and then I told her what was going on. And she was like, she didn't believe me. Now, let me ask you a question. Did this man take your virginity from you? No. Okay. He, um, I was 17. Okay, you, you, were, you were 17, okay. So he started molesting you at 17. So all of this yeah. built up through the murder, okay, uh, of your mother, mm -hmm. okay. So um, just like, what are some of the things that he used to say to you as far as did he ever try to tear you down and say bad things to you about you, or or he always was just telling you he loved you? He was getting abusive, and I and I was like, I'm not gonna deal with this. I'm not gonna deal with this. I'm not gonna send you no pictures of me, and I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm not. I'm not. A, I wouldn't do that to my sister, but he he knows what he did. He knows he was wrong. Oh. You know? That's no question. He was wrong all the way around. You were you you know, he took advantage of you. You didn't take advantage of him. So yeah, he was in the wrong one hundred percent wrong. Um how let me just like how long did you guys have your relationship, your affair going on before you realized that you were starting to have feelings for this man and love this man? Because he was doing my hair, putting my hair in box sprays. Making me wear all these tight clothes and wear thongs and stuff like that. So basically, he was dressing you up to mm -hmm. how he wanted you to be. He was basically building you up to be who he wanted you to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, you know, that's that's kind of mind boggling a little bit. Not Not on your end because you didn't do anything wrong once again. He did all the wrong things, and he should be, like I said, right now, I honestly feel that he should be prosecuted and put in jail right now for what he done to you. And and a lot of the audience, they were asking the same thing, like, was this man ever prosecuted? You know, why the police didn't go after him? Because he should be in prison for the He's thing. He's probably 54 by now. Yes, that don't have anything to do with it. He should still be in prison for what he done to you and how he did it to you because I'm quite sure that you didn't you did not do this so you did not start this affair okay you did let me just put it like this you didn't initiate this affair the first time listen, I, hmm? listen he told me that he wanted to me to relax when we when we was in the motel and he was like So the foot doctor's appointment was going to the motel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, at any time, did anyone in your family start to get suspicious that you and this man was having an affair? Did anybody? Yeah, my cousin. Okay. How did your cousin start to get suspicious? Well, she the same age as me. Her name was Isis, and she kept saying that I was being touched, and she know he's so well. I'm I'm that you and him had sex where were you guys at and how did that come into play that y'all had sex I was at his house in Dickerson you know where that's at Dickerson over on the east side of Detroit east side of Detroit yeah. okay yeah okay so can I ask you his name Norman Willis Norman Willis okay Willer 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 Norman Willer okay so um the first time you guys had, okay, where where were you the first time that you guys had sex? Um, I don't know. 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 I don't
um, it was nighttime, and I was falling asleep. And then he started um, touching me uncomfortably, and I didn't know what to do. I got scared. And then he just had sex with me, but he locked the doors so nobody could hear me. But, like, I feel like that he always wanted, all, all he wanted was sex. So was he was he wearing a condom while he was having sex with you, or it was not without a condom? No. Now, now this is something that is it might be kind of hard. I'm gonna ask you this question. So, mm-hmm. by him having sex with you without a condom, is it a possibility that your twins could possibly be his kids? No, because I I got pregnant at 16, and when I had my baby, my mom told me I couldn't keep them in her house. Oh. So you gave birth to your children in a car? A red car, yeah. It was his car. Okay, but you did eventually get to the hospital when they got you together? Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, okay. Like I said, because you you, done, you lived a hard life. A hard life. And um, let me ask you about your sister, Rose, okay? I, I, saw, I um, looked her up on Facebook. I saw her pictures and everything. Oh. Your sister, Rose. Roseanne? Yeah. And I saw I saw her on the news. She was very supportive of you on the media. She was very supportive of, her, of you. Uh, what yeah. is what is your relationship like with your sister? We have a very sweet years apart. She's about to be thirty years old. She come she just came to one of my court dates, and she I, I kissed her on the cheek. I, I have a very good relationship with my siblings. We are very close. Cause my dad always raised us. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, well that that's a good that's a good thing that you got to. My dad has sixteen kids. Mhm. So with with Rose, you and her don't have the same mother. You just got the same father. Yeah. Okay. Well, she I know she I know that she's supportive of you and and she's there that I know of for you. And um, like I said, she was always holding you down in the media, and so did your two brothers. They held or one of your brothers I saw that he held you down. And you had an auntie that was there that held you down. So you yeah, got me it. and my brothers, we grew up together. So they know something was wrong, but they didn't give me the help I needed. And now they feel bad that everything had happened. Me, me and my brothers are so close. Like, we, we, I'm more close to my brothers than all my sisters. Right. We don't see each other often. But um, when I did what I did, right. my sister wasn't talking to me because I think she found out what had happened. And where my mom was at, so I had no relationship with my sister in the bath. Right. Now, do any of your like did he tr- molest any other of your siblings or family members? No. No. Just you. Yeah. Let me ask you this right now. Mm-hmm. If you could talk to Norman right now, what would you say to Norman? Okay. Do Norman still live on Dickerson to this day? That you know? Yeah. Is it possible that you would you like for me and one of my camera crews to go by that house to check on yeah. your sister? Yeah. Okay. Just send me his address in the email and me and I my. I remember his address. Uh, he don't answer the phone. Oh, he, he don't? He's on Dickerson and on. Um, what's that street? Next to the Social Security office. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. His house is blue. Mm-hmm. He stayed right there off of Jefferson. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. By the CVS. I know what you're talking about. Uh, if you like, send me his phone number. When we get off the phone, send it to me in an email. And I'll call him. And see if I can okay. get, see if I can get him on the phone first. If that don't okay. work out, then we'll go by the house. Okay. Now this is what you do. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna 
let the number go out. So I'm, I'm going to cut the number out because that's, she's giving out an actual phone number. I think it's 86. Okay. It's been a while. Five, eight. Okay. Wow. Well, just know we got you. The the family got you. I got you. And you know we we gonna we gonna look out for you and we gonna be supporting you. Like I said, you got my phone number, and you can call me anytime, anytime. You know what I'm saying. And, and we can chop it up, okay? Okay. All right. So what I'm doing, because right now I'm out on the bottom taking care of some business. I just want to you have one minute remaining to text down with you a little bit. And now that I, you know, I got a little bit closure on some some of the answers. You can give me a call later on tonight, and you and I we can chop it up if that's if you if you want to do that. You cool? Yeah. All right. Thank you for calling me, and I really appreciate you know you 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 know giving me this interview. And I appreciate, you know, you know, you being strong and, and telling your side of the truth. And I'm happy that a lot of the women, you know what I'm saying, they took a liking to you and, and they want to help you out. A lot of them want to help you out. So you're going to have some help. Okay? Okay. All right. I'll talk to you a little bit later on. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, we got one more and then we're going to get Delilah's father on the phone. Now, like in the, in the interview, you were saying that you were a cutter. And your mother yeah. knew, knew that you was a cutter. Explain to me, you know, when you say you was a cutter, what does that mean by you saying that you was a cutter? Well, I cut my hair in front of my brother, and I just kept on crying and crying and crying to get out the house. And he didn't trust me. That's all that yeah. Okay. Now, when you when, one more thing in the, about the cutting situation. Now. Oh, I'm sorry. When I was cutting my hair, I was. How old was I? I think I was like 15. Okay. And I was cutting my hair, and I was cutting my hair with a razor. And I was cutting it with a razor. And I was like, I did it in front of my brother, and I felt so bad. Like, I should never do that again. Because I was just crying and crying. He really was trying to calm me down. I love my brother, DeMarco and DeMarcus. They are the closest. And I have, I love my sisters, Keita and Zakia. I love them to death, and Kiara and Carlos and the rest of the gang. Because my dad got 16 kids, but my mom got five. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. I love my brother. And I'm, I know they love you too, for real. Now, like the cutting, so you only did the cutting one time to yourself, or you yeah. did? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. So the cutting thing, that was just a temporary, temporary fix. That, that's all, the, that's a good thing. Um, Hey, what else I wanted to ask you? Because a lot, like I said, a lot of people was is supporting you big time. So it was like just a couple questions that I I really wanted you know to to clear up for them when I when I go back live tonight and you know and I talk to them because you know like I said you got the people they they supporting you and I'm gonna reach out to your father and speak with your father on behalf of you know of yourself you know what I'm saying and, and about how can we set up money with doing you a getting you an attorney because you know you need that because no one you know i don't see nobody else i could be wrong but i don't think nobody else is trying to put that kind of money up to get you an appeals attorney like right now you're going through court you are you still in the court system right now going back through the court yeah. system okay now are you appealing or are they giving you a new trial a new trial okay do you have a, a trial date set or not yet in a fall it's going to be in the fall. Beautiful. That That's a good thing. So is it going to be in Macomb County? Yeah. 
okay, I'm we're going to stay in contact because I want to come to your court appearance, you know what I'm saying, and support you. And I'm quite sure that a few of the ladies that's here, they will want to come in and sit in and support you as well because you need all the support. Ladies and gentlemen, who think the stepfather is scum of the earth? Let me see the eyes go up. Put the eyes up if you think the stepfather is the scum of the earth. I want to see the eyes if you think this guy is the scum of the earth and he should be prosecuted, should be burnt, should be killed and put in jail. Let me see the eyes go up, ladies and gentlemen, if you feel this way about the stepfather. See a few eyes up there. <clears throat> okay. 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 Yes, yes, yes. The eyes. Everybody in this chat thinks he's the scum of the earth. What if I told you, ladies and gentlemen, that every mother... What if I told you that everything that this lady has told us was a lie? What if I told you that the stepfather never molested her? What if I told you that a young man laced her weed with some dope? With some type of stuff because he was trying to screw her. And it mentally messed her mind up. What if I told you that? So what if I told you that she really did kill her mother? She did that. But she fabricated some stuff here. So now that's why I'm going to get her father on the phone right now to clear this up. Yes. So I, I'm i going to pull down all the information for anybody donating anything to her because that was foul as hell, you know. So let's get the father on the phone so he can tell you guys what really happened. It, this is like some Maury Povich type shit, Jerry Springer shit. Hello. Hello, how you doing, my brother? This is Rail calling. I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine. my brother, I got you live right now on um, Real World Podcast. And I explained to everybody that you're the De you're Delilah's father. And, okay. And I explained to everybody that everything that she told us was a lie. And you verified that and you told the truth. Could you explain to my audience about the stepfather, all, how this was a lie and, and everything? Could you tell your side of the story, sir? Because there's two, like you said earlier when we talked, there's always two sides of a story and there's the truth. Okay, um, I raised Delilah from when she was born until she lived with her mother for about a year. Delilah was raised in a beautiful home with her two brothers and her sister and brother. Yes, sir. Um, she got two brothers by her mother that I had from her mom, and she was raised in the house by Sharice, who also had a son and a daughter by me. Mm-hmm. Um, they was raised in Dearborn in a beautiful community, went to the best schools. Delilah had never had a whooping once in her life. She was very quiet, somewhat of an honor roll student. Mm -hmm. So I really never had to do nothing but every once in a while holler at her, and she'd get right back in line. We started having problems when we moved out of Dearborn into Hamtramck for one year. Mm -hmm. She started going to junior, junior high school. She started liking boys. That's just a part of life. I'm cool with that to a certain degree. Yes, sir. Okay, so when she started, or when it was found out that she was drinking, smoking a little weed, smoking cigarettes, and trying to have sex, 
that's when all hell broke loose. Cause I don't I don't play that on no on no level. Right. Um, I'm raising good kids, so whatever path they go down after that, that's their choice. Mm-hmm. Um, when Delilah's mother was hit by a drunk driver, the kids were like one, two, and three, so she never got a chance to know her mother. Right. Because when her mother was hit by a drunk driver, she was like, Delilah was just turning one. Um, her mother went to Hawaii for like seven to ten years, and she never got a chance to know Delilah. But she did get a chance to know the boys a little bit before she was hit. Mm -hmm. um, so when her mother finally came back, Delilah was like um, 10, 9, 10 years old. And in study, coming back, being a parent of discipline and nurturing, she felt guilty for being gone out of the kids' lives for so long. She tried to buy their love with materialistic things and money. Mm -hmm. I explained to her that's not how you do it. It wasn't your fault that you were going out of their life. You want to get yourself back on track after being hit by a drunk driver and your life was dramatically changed to a healthy person, to a handicapped person now who can never walk again. Mm -hmm. She didn't listen to me. She still tried to buy the kids love and buy their respect. So whenever I discipline them, they, want to, they would want to run to their mother's house. Mm -hmm. And I, I only allowed that a little bit because you can't, you, you just can't let them play the parents against each other. Correct. Okay, so I, I'm going to speed the story up because I know you got things to do. No, sir, take your um, time. Take your time, brother. Take your time. Don't rush. Go ahead. Tell your side of the okay, truth. Okay, so when me and Delilah was going back and forth and I reached my limit, I told her, either you get yourself together because the next thing I catch you doing, I'm going to send you to a girl's detention home because I can't whoop you like I whoop your brother because you're a young lady. And I have never whooped you before. I figured we could straighten it out. You cannot drink and stay in my house. I don't drink. You cannot have sex because you're a kid. You cannot smoke weed. She found a little Mexican boyfriend from the Hamtramck area who was introducing her to everything because his people had a couple of dollars and they owned a Dairy Queen, so he had a, you know, he was doing his thing as a, uh, he was a higher uh, junior high student, junior high school student than her, but all he seen was a little pretty girl, long, real pretty hair, and he, you know, he was just up to her, and it all it went all good for him because she let him, she she drunk a little bit, she smoked a little bit, and they was trying to have sex. So I intervened when I reached my limit and say, look, I'm gonna put you in a detention center until you get your head on right with all girls because I can't work and watch you too. Right. And your brothers, they can, they're not going to do it either. So before I took her to the detention center that weekend, her mother asked for a chance to let her live with her. Mm -hmm. And I figured I'd give her a shot at it because she never had a chance to be a mother. Right. So I chose mother over detention center. So I let her go stay with her mother because it kept her away from that kid who stayed in the neighborhood of Hamtramck was introducing her to these things. Exactly. Okay, so she was there about four or five months, and her mother was covering covering for her. So I didn't know nothing unless somebody told me something. So right. whenever the brothers would get mad at her, you know how brothers and sisters are. We fight, but mm -hmm. we love each other. Exactly. That's a part of life in the, in, in the black family. Brothers and sisters fight. Um. So when they would get mad at her, they would tell some of the things that she was doing out at her mother's house that I never knew about, which was sneaking around, drinking, smoking again, which I thought I was getting away from. But when you when you see a young girl out here and you're an old, older person and you see a, a way to get to her with things that you already do, you're going to go for it. I never found out the guy who gave my daughter weed and laced it with something, which got her so mentally off track. Because my daughter is very, very mentally ill. I promise you this. I it's, believe you. Ain't nobody in the black family. I'm 51 years old in June. No one in the black family can deal with another black child murdering or killing their parents. It was unheard of 
It was something out of a scary movie. It was something you never knew how to deal with because it didn't happen in the black family. We don't play that. Right. Um, before Lila um, killed her mother, she was walking around saying the devil was talking to her. Now, mind you, she wasn't telling me this. She was telling her brothers this, mm -hmm. which is they all 11 months apart, those three. So she's like 14, 15, and 16. They all 11 months apart. Mm -hmm. So they taking it as a joke, and they but they videotaping it on their cell phone. Mm -hmm. If I would have seen the cell phone video of her saying this, I would immediately have her removed from the mom's house. But I didn't find out about the video that they had on their phone all the time until after the fact. Because they thought she would get in trouble for saying she's going to kill her mama. The devil made her do it. They thought it was funny. They thought it was a joke. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to speed the story up again. The night she killed her mother, she claimed her mother had an insurance policy out on her. And she, her mother was going to kill her at 8 o'clock p.m. So she had to kill her mom at 7 o'clock p.m. That's what happened. At 7 o'clock p.m., she attacked her mother from behind while her mother was on a computer in a wheelchair. Her mother adored her. Her mother never whooped her. Her mother never, whatever delighted to do something, she couldn't do no wrong. So all that she told the people, it wasn't true. Her mother loved her. From day one until she was killed, she loved her daughter. Wow. Uh, my daughter has mental issues that only a doctor of some professional level can straighten out or medication. Cause I can't do it. All I can do is be a father. That's it. Um, the reason the guy don't let Delilah speak to her younger sister mm -hmm. is because Delilah killed her mother, his woman, his fiance. I have an unconditional love for my daughter because we're bond by, we're, we're binded by blood. Exactly. He don't have to have that feeling like I do because you took his heart away. You took his daughter's mother away brutally. But we know it was a mental thing. And it was all because a man was trying to have sex with a young lady. And he laced the weed with something other than weed just to have sex, not knowing what the outcome would end at. So he got away scot-free. But if it is a God, God going to take care of him. Awesome. Again. My kid's mother's fiance never, ever molested my daughter, ever. All he did is took care of her and her mother, the best of his ability. I watched it. I seen it. For years he was with her, taking care of her. He gave up the things he was doing to babysit an adult that he was in love with. Wow. Um, he worked hard when he got a chance to get a job. I didn't, really didn't like him because I used to call him a freeloader. And me and him had a physical fight once or twice before. Just to, we were just trying to get the respect out of each other. So it had to get physical once or twice. But we, we respect each other overall. But ain't no man going to molest my daughter and walk the street. I promise you this. So when I heard this podcast that she was on and told that story, because that's mm -hmm. what it was, a story. Right. I don't get on podcasts. I don't do this. But I can't let nobody drag nobody's name through the mud for personal vendettas and personal reasons, whether it's financial stability to get people to send her money or whether it's just for attention because she locked up in prison and don't know how to do her time because she never did time before. Right. The street and the Wayne County Jail taught me how to do time for doing a crime. But when, you, when somebody tells you you're doing life and you're 17 years old, it don't register. You become bored, and you do things like this podcast thing for attention, because that's all she's doing is seeking attention. My daughter do not have any children, Thank never you. has been pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's just seeking attention that I can't give her or her sisters and brothers can't get her, give her because she's incarcerated. So we just waiting for her to get home if they let her go sometime soon. We mm -hmm. wanted her to do sometime because she took a life. She took a life brutally. So we wanted her to do some time. Exactly. Seven, ten years to learn what you did was wrong. To get some mental help in prison. You can get mental help in prison. Yeah. Besides the medication. I know. I but I, I'm, just, I'm just on here 
to clear the man's name who helped raise her, exactly. who loved her mother to death, mm -hmm. and who got her child by her, her mother. And he don't have to love her or let her talk to her sister because my daughter took his fiance's life brutally. Can you imagine? Nobody's Christmas is the same no more. No one's Christmas no. is the same anymore. No, it's so, not. It's, for, it's changed forever. And you 100% right. You know, she, that was his fiance. And like you say, he gave up his life to help take care take of her. Care of. So, you know, yeah. he, he obviously, he really did love this woman to to set set aside whatever he was doing to take care of her. So you 100% right. No, he doesn't have to let her see his children, you know, see, talk to his, you know, his daughter, which is her sister, because this man probably is still grieving because this is still fresh. This isn't, uh, oh, it's a couple years old. Every, every time he sees his daughter, it reminds him of his fiance. And it also reminds him of who took his fiance away from here. So just because I might forgive you or your brothers might forgive you for taking someone's life because they know you're going through a mental thing, mm -hmm. he doesn't have to. So right. don't drag his name through the mud the way she's doing on air or anytime because you're angry because he don't want to talk to you. It's nothing to talk about. Exactly. Um, you're my daughter. I got to stick it out with you to get you back on solid ground. Not you. That's true. Wow. So I'm just I'm just clearing the air, bro. My <laughs> daughter has no children, never had any children. Mm-hmm. My daughter was loved from day one, and as far as her bringing up strippers and strip clubs, that's what clothed her. That's what kept a roof over her head and food in her stomach. It's just a job. I don't know why she brought that up. She was never around no stripper. Mm -hmm. No stripper raised her. None of that. Sharice raised her perfectly. She decided she wanted to be a drinker, a smoker. She decided she wanted to smoke weed. No, her daddy don't play that. And you can only have what's in the darkness for so long before it comes to light. Yes, sir. So if people want to write her, send her money, that's their freedom of, to do whatever they want to do. But I'm not letting them do it on no lie. They can just do it because they want to, because she needs mental help, because she got a mental problem. Yes, sir. Like I said, I, I've did time before, and I honestly know that in there she's going to be forced to get that help and to take that medication that they, they give yeah. her so you know um I, I'm, I'm happy that um because you know like when i was just talking to her asking her certain things you know it started it's like wait a minute you didn't say this last night or, or you know and a lot of the audience someone was like why did you ask her the same question three or four times because the, the, it kept changing the story the truth mm -hmm. the truth never changed sir right you know it, it doesn't sir you're right and so that's why so, I said, I, t I told so, him, look, let me contact your father so I can let him handle this money because I don't want to handle the money. And if you don't give me um, your father, I'm not going to no boyfriend, no sister, nobody. It has to be your father because I know it's going to get done right. And she reluctantly gave me your phone number to call you. And well, I'm happy that she did. She's been, she has called me. Seven times, three times when I was on the phone talking to you, I sent to the voicemail, and four times while I've been waiting for you to call. Mm -hmm. I'm not standing on no lie. I don't know what you call yourself doing. I don't, don't call me on no bullshit because I don't play that. So she called me seven times and I answered no call because I seen the video of what she did and what she said on to the world, mm -hmm. which was a lie. Talking about that man wanted you to kill his woman, his baby mama, come on, man, stop that. He raped you. You start loving him. Come on, man, what story are you going to go with? Yeah. You said the devil, you said the devil was making you, you was hearing the devil's voice. You, I seen it on video. I heard it with my own ears. I seen her say this on the phone. I ain't going by no he say, she say. So about her saying he raped her and she told me about it and I ain't do nothing about it. And all, man, that's all bullshit. Like I said, I gave you my opinion about it, how I felt you led her a little bit on what to say, how to answer the question, because she didn't know what to say. That was just my personal opinion, because if you were left it up to her to say anything of the questions you would have asked her, she was totally lost. Because like I said, the truth don't change. I love my daughter. Mm -hmm. 
Well, no, technically I didn't leave her. I remember, you know, because I asked her these questions before we had spoke. And I just remember what she said. And I'm like, okay, well, you remember you did say this, right? And, you know, and then it just started as we was listening to the um, playback today. It, it, it just it, it didn't sound genuine because I, I've interviewed Joe, um, Joe Gantz, a murderer who killed his wife. And you, you remember that. He didn't kill his wife, but he killed the Barbara Sherrill's wife. I understood. I understood. Yeah, and he he straight up was like, "Hey, this is what I did. It wasn't no lie. His 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 truth never changed, and everything. And it just it didn't sound right, you know what I'm saying? So I said, Let, you know, and and by you straightening all this out and clearing that man's name because he had a a bad name, and you know, and I'm happy that you cleared his name, and I'm happy that you set the record straight because she has been calling me after while you and I was talking, she was blowing me up. Since, she was blowing me up too, bro. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm like, okay, well, no, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to really talk to you right now because you really, how many, just I mean, how many people have put money on her books already off of a lie? You know, I, and, I have no idea. No, I have no idea. No. All I know is my daughter's young. Mm -hmm. She has a mental issue. And I know it's older women in there manipulating her into doing this because they're going to get some of that money, too. Yeah, I believe that because she's young. So that's, all, that's, that's, some, that's some inmates in there who don't get no income. Mm -hmm. They manipulating the Lila. I'm not saying Lila's innocent because she knows the truth and she know a lot. Mm -hmm. they, they tell her what to say and what to do and how to get that money on a sneaky, sneak hustle tip because they, all they do is sit around bored and think of ways to get money because they all in there broke or they ain't got the kind of money they want in their account because mm -hmm. how they mistreated they family when they was on the street. Exactly. So, hey man, I appreciate you letting me see the clip of her interview. I appreciate you. And I appreciate just, man, just, I, we stand on truth, man. We gonna, mm -hmm. I understand the ratings. I understand people mm -hmm. like drama. I understand no. that. No, we gotta tell the truth. We stand on the yeah. uh, stand on the truth. And that's why I had and, you. And let the, and let the truth fall, let the chips fall where they may. And that's why I had to have you on, brother, to to clear this up. And you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, whoa, you know that that was kind of deep, and you it, it was like a cut, like you know, because I'm like, wow, you know, we was really feeling sorry for her, and you know, and I'm like, okay, but thank you, brother. I appreciate you for you know even stepping on and telling the truth. You cleared the the air. And, you know, things is done. I appreciate you, sir. No problem, man. All right. Appreciate it. Peace and love, brother. For sure. All right. Who do it like I do it? Who go seek the truth like I go seek the truth? That's why I tell you, let someone come and tell their side of the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because lies be told. So that was, I got her father to come forward to clear the air. I got a father to, to clear this man's name because we all thought the man was scum. We all did. I thought he was scum. I was thinking, you know, he need his nuts cut off behind that. You know? Um, is there anybody that want to call in? Because the line is open. The line is open. Do anybody want to call in and we address this situation and talk about it, family? You know, this... the. This is, you know, people lie. And I just, I had a funny feeling that she was lying after just listening to the conversation. This is what caught me. I'm going to play the rest of the clip that I cut off, y'all, because it was like, at, um, you still got seven minutes of it. And I'm going to play a little bit of it, right? Here we go. Here's the, here's the other clip right here. This is what got me to knowing she was lying. Here we go. And the, the the courts need to see that you got the support and you got new support, new family members, not only your family, but you got the Real World Podcast family as well. A lot of those ladies, they want to stand behind you as well and support you because every it, at the end of the day, you are taking responsibility for what you've done. You, yeah, and, and, and I can't blame nobody else for me, but um, I can't blame nobody else for me, but I'm going to tell you this. Mm -hmm. Right, what was the question? I said you are taking responsibility for what you did, right? Yeah, okay. and I understand that, but I have kids out there that I have to raise, and I have yes. to put food in their mouth, and I, I my, my daddy tried to doing it. That's probably why he's not breaking up here to see me. 
But I really want to reach out to him, Chris, and I, I, I do love him. But I really need a relationship with my kids. Like, I don't, I don't, like, they need to know, they know who I am because he came up to the county before and was, and it was like, hi, mommy. And I didn't really see them. I heard their voices. I was like, hi, baby. And then I was like, Chris, can I speak to my That right there threw me for a loop because I remember being, um, going to the county jail and see people, right? And um, there's a big ass glass, right? Big glass screen. And you can see everything and everybody that's there. So that right there got me to scratch in my head. Like, wait a minute. You didn't see them, but you heard their voices. So then I got to thinking, you heard voices. This can't be real. She said, I didn't see my kids. I didn't really see them. I just heard their voices. Now, everybody know who's been to the county jail, they do not allow kids or babies in the county jail. Now, she was 17 when she did this, right? She got pregnant at 16 and had the kids at 17, right? So how can a little baby or babies say, Hey mommy, how is that possible? You got to look at the time frame here now. So all this, I start adding all this up and adding all this up. It's like, it ain't making sense. She's not telling the truth. Here we go. My kids. And then he was like, well, why are you, why are you in prison? And he wanted to know. And I, I don't know if he upset me, but he's really taking it out on me. Okay, so we it's best not to even try to reach out to him, so we're just going to reach out to your father. That's all that matters. Okay. 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 Don't, yeah, that's all that matters. We're going to reach out to him. Now, on the inside, are any of the women in there trying to, you know, treat you bad for what you've done to your mother or not? No. You can also call this number. This is um, Sharice McDaniel Davis. Mm-hmm. Sharice McDaniel Davis. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get an ink pen so I can uh, write her number down. Hold on. Don't break up my kids because I don't, I don't think. That's I think you should let him know that he have grandchildren because yeah. you know. Boy, down. I was a daddy's girl. Well, pen so I can uh, write her number down. Hold okay. on. Don't break up my kids because I don't, I don't think that's none of his business. Okay, so so your father don't know that you have kids. He don't know that he's a grandfather. No. Okay, so you want to keep that a, a secret? Is it a reason? A certain, a particular reason that you want. Because if he found out I was pregnant, he gonna beat the boy down. I was a daddy's girl. Well, I'm quite sure he wanna, he wanna reach out to his. Don't, don't do him like that. He wanna, he wanna meet his grandkids. You know what I'm saying? I think you should let him know that he have grandchildren because you know he possibly can step up and help your your kids father out with with his grandchildren. I'm a, I'm a grandfather. And you are? Yeah, you know, and, and it's like, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a young grandfather, and I was I was disappointed at my daughter when my daughter got pregnant. I didn't want anything to do with, with her or my grandchild, but when when she had my grand, before she had my grandbaby, I I had to sit down, I had to think about, you know, did I want my daughter on the streets and, and living rough? No, I didn't, and so... Well, my granddaughter got his shit. Me and my granddaughter, we un we inseparable. That's my little my little road dog. Everywhere I go, she go. You know what I'm saying? And you know, she she's only two years old. She'll be three this year, but she's very very smart. So you know, mm -hmm. you know, don't don't deny your father the opportunity to be a grandfather. If if you mm -hmm. want if you want me to, I will break it to him and I will tell him that he has grandchildren. Right. So I can do that if you don't mind. Okay. I'll do that because you know, you never know. Your kids could possibly be in a, a better predicament with your father versus their father. Mm-hmm. You know, think about that. Think about that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to take care of that for you. And um, the rest will be history. You know, okay. so let you know, you, you got people that's in your corner now. So just, you know, sit back and relax and enjoy, you know, letting somebody else step up for you. You feel me? Okay. Okay. 
So like so so once again, none of the women tried to ever um, cause harm to you or anything in prison, right? No. Now as you saw, like I just knew that she was lying. When she said, "Wait a minute, your 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 father don't know that you got kids." How was that even possible? How was that possible? Hmm. I mean, just you know what? It, it, it just you know, <laughs> criminal. <laughs> She was one of the bad criminals, ladies and gentlemen. She was one of the bad ones. Will I stop interviewing criminals? No. Not at all. Because I have a bunch of interviews lined up. Lots of them coming. So all we just say is, wow. I'm glad you didn't do it. I'm glad you didn't do it. I'm, I'm glad no one put any money on the books. I'm, I'm glad, you know... Because that's no that that that's so sad, you know. The, why? I mean, you know, like I said, I just I listened to the end. I was just happy to get the interview and bring it to you guys, right? And then I was just start listening and just started listening and just started listening. Like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? And I called my manager, right? And I was like, um, let me sing you over this video clip, my guy. And my manager, he heard it, and he was like, something don't sound right. Oh, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep on interviewing inmates. You know what I'm saying? And um, my manager said, you know, you need to get up back on the phone and make her clear these questions up right here. You know, clear these up because it's not making sense. And the more, I'm going to say, I listened to this interview about five times, right? And I said, nah, she got some questions. She got she to gotta answer this shit. Um, she gave me her father's number. She didn't want to, but I told her I will make sure no one sent her $1 if she did not give me her father's number. I was like, I will hold up and I will take every bit of information down if you don't give me your father's number, let me talk to your father. And she gave me the number. I guess she thought her father was going to lie for her because she was trying to blow him up. And I lied. I was like, well, I'm going to call your father tonight around 8 o'clock. That's what I told her. But as soon as I hung up the phone, I called her father immediately. And she was calling immediately, too, to try to get her father to lie. So, this is, you know, this is real life shit, ladies and gentlemen. Real fucking life shit that, that goes on, you know what I'm saying? And now you see. So now, what we got to do as a community, she's no better than these e-baggers. She's no better than those guys. Lying, scamming, cheating, trying to get people to give them money. She's no better than them and she's in prison doing it. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, make these people prove what they're going to do with your money. Prove it. And this right here, I hope this, this, this story right here, I hope this wakes all you, wake everybody up. Stop throwing your money away. Stop throwing your money away. And make these people show you some god darn receipts. Make them show you some receipts. Now this is what I want everybody to do. I want everybody to start following me on social media, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to blow my social media up. Because I got a lot of stuff coming and a lot of inmates. And I got some inmate stories that's going to blow your mind. I'm talking about these. these I'm talking about inmates. that I don't, I'm not doing inmates that done sold a dime bag of weed or a nickel crack rock. I'm not, I'm not interviewing those guys. I'm interviewing inmates that has worldwide media coverage attention. These are the inmates I'm, I'm, I'm after. 
And these are the ones that I have landed. I got eight interviews lined up this next week coming along after the quarantine shit is over with. That's right. Trust no one with money. So like I said, I got eight inmates in interviews coming. These is good interviews. And I have not asked you guys for one dollar. Who pay for these calls? I pay for these calls because this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So people, we, we, I'm shocked still, ladies and gentlemen, that this woman tried to get over on us. And by her getting over on, trying to get over on, on me, she's getting over on you. Her getting over on you, she's, you know, getting over on me, vice versa. It, it is what it is. When she get down on one of us, she get down on all of us. If you get down on one of us, you get down on all of us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my Twitter account is at Real World. That's my Twitter account, at Real World. That's the Twitter account. You can also follow me on IG, Real World Podcast on IG, ladies and gentlemen, Real World Podcast. I also have a Facebook page, ladies and gentlemen, and the Facebook page is Real World Podcast. Make sure you guys go over there and like the Real World Podcast page. And I'm putting together the real, uh, it's going to be called Real World Elite. Real World Elite is where only 50 people, 50 family members will be allowed. It's a secret group. I have to invite you in just like the 313 Live show. And you guys are going to get a sneak peek of everything that I'm doing before I hit YouTube. You guys are going to, when I do pre-interviews and talk to people, I'm going to give that to you guys. I'm going to give it to you, no one else. You guys are going to be exclusive to that only. So I'm going to have to know who each and every last one of you are, you know what I'm saying, through the messenger thing that's going to be on the Real, on Real World Podcast Facebook page. Yes, yes. Um... Real World Podcast is on IG, Facebook, yep, and Twitter is Real World. Look at you, Kim. You on your on your stuff. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. So you guys are gonna be Kim. I'm going to most definitely. You're going to be one of those 50 members that get into the elite. You're gonna be one of. Matter of fact, all of my moderators that I mess with, all you guys are automatically moderators are automatically in the elite family. You guys are automatically there, so you guys don't have to worry about it. And when I start back pressing up shirts, T-shirts, when I get my machine fixed, you guys got a T-shirt coming for free. Your, your T-shirt is going to be different. It's going to have the Real World Podcast logo, and on the sleeve, it's going to have a blue wrench on it. You know what I'm saying? And that's for my moderators. When you see that shirt, you know that that's one of my moderators. Real talk. Thank you, Captain of My Soul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hey, I appreciate you too, Captain of My Soul. Um, and I appreciate everybody else. Like I said, I'm trying to, we trying to move away from the negative side. We done already smashed who we needed to smash. We done got them out the way. So now we finna move on to the product. This is the product that I'm going to bring to you guys. And, you know, I could have been one of those scantless podcasters right just like the rest of those guys are but i'm not and i could have said you know what i'm not, i'm gonna let this lie ride i'm gonna let it ride and keep it going for this girl just for the ratings because it is it, probably gonna make me look bad but I, it couldn't make me look bad and I said, fuck it. No, I'm not going to do that. When I heard her father lay the law down and said what he had to say, I said, no, we're going to do, I'm going to put this out here and let it be known that this was a lie. This was a lie. She lied, ladies and gentlemen. Do anybody want to call in before we I bounce out of here? Do anybody want to call in and, and, and give their opinion? 
You can call in and give your opinion. And we can chop it up. Y'all know the emails is always open. People, you want to email email me, you can email me and tell me what's on your mind. All is good. All is love. I got monetized, ladies and gentlemen. And let me see how long I've been putting out videos, y'all. Because you got to go off the dates you've been putting out videos, not the time you open up your YouTube channel. So how long did it take me to get monetized, ladies and gentlemen? Let me take a look and let me see. Okay. Let me see. How long did it take me to get monetized? Uh, okay. Tell you in one minute. Uh, bam, here we go. I got monetized, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we go, here we go. It took me three months to get monetized. That's when I dropped my first video three months ago, ladies and gentlemen. Three months ago, it took me three months to get monetized. It took me three months to get over a thousand subscriber family members. And it also took me uh, three months. Let me see. It took me three months to drum roll to get over a hundred thousand views. It took me three months to do all of that. Now, it take a lot of YouTubers and podcasters six months to a year to get this shit. And I did it in three months, three months. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that donation. Thank you. We ate the real world podcast. We thank you. And, you know, I do this because of guys like you. You know what I'm saying? I do this for you guys because you guys deserve this. Just like I deserve, you know, to even have you guys. I'm lucky to have you guys. Real talk. Without you guys, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without you guys. Thank you, Gina. Mad respect to you, too. Look up Kenny Kim's Saint Kim's. Okay, I was a friend. I'm going to look him up. Matter of fact, let me snap, snap a picture of that. Let me snap a picture because I'm always looking for good stuff. Okay. Hey, listen, y'all. If anybody, anybody got an a inmate that they want me to look into as far as their crimes or whatever, send me an email on that so I can jump straight on it, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm going to get on my shit. I mean, get all my stuff. I'm, I'm trying to stop cussing since we monetize now. I'm going to stop the cussing because, you know, we can't get certain ads if, you know, we're cussing. So I'm going to do what I do, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to get the people on as soon as possible. Listen, y'all, I love you guys. I love all of you guys. None of this is possible without you guys. We are we finna rock YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. We finna rock this and we finna do what we do. We finna be in our own lane. We in our own lane over here. We ain't in nobody's lane. People who ain't doing what I'm doing, they finna start doing what I'm doing. Let, let, let me say that again. People who ain't doing what I'm doing, they're going to start doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? The Eric Colder interview, I cannot get him quick enough he's the one that's wanting to go to trial so i have to wait until after his court day he said we got to wait till after court and he will call me we will do the interview i'm going to write him i'm going to reach out to him and write him this week and see what's going on so um I, i'm i can just i can go off of what he say you know what i'm saying i did my part now he got to do his part ladies and gentlemen peace and love Thank you, guys. Like I said, I love you. I'm going to go to bat for y'all. I went to war for y'all because y'all are my family. I went to, I really went to war, and I'll go to war for y'all again. Peace and love, everybody. I'm out of here, and I'll see you tomorrow.